Hi, hope you're doing all right. Um, Jesus is the son of God. Here on Christianity, it could come up. It's one of those that's, it's very easy to talk about it vaguely, but for high grades, they're going to be looking for um, quite a bit of depth here. And there's two important quotes that are to do with this area of the spec. And the quotes are actually on the spec, which means that they could appear in questions. So I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about this. OK. To start off with this question of what does it mean to say that Jesus is the son of God? We don't know. We can't know. That's knowledge that's not available to us because we don't know exactly the context of what's written in the Bible. We weren't there and we can't ask Jesus. So we haven't got to worry too much about nailing down an answer. All we've got to do is think about the possibilities. And really, there's two main possibilities. You've got the kind of Trinitarian approach, which means accepting the doctrine of the Trinity, in which case Jesus, our son, means that Jesus's authority is God's authority. So as part of the Trinity, that means that if Jesus is part of God, if he is the son of God, if he is God in human form, he really has to have God's authority. Other Christians have got a slightly different view. Now, this is not necessarily a total rejection of the Trinity, but it's a more liberal view, possibly a little bit more of a modern view, and say that son of God is a phrase that marks Jesus out as someone who is exceptional and perhaps had a relationship with God, but doesn't have the authority of God. So we're going to explore these two possibilities as we go through. OK, first quote you've got to learn. And the good news is it's really short. It's six words. I and the father are one from John's Gospel. It's John chapter 10, verse 30. So Jesus says this in response to some people who ask him to basically tell us who you are, tell us what your deal is. And if you're thinking the answer is a bit cryptic, then you're right. We don't really know what Jesus meant when he said this. So he might have been saying, I am literally one with the Father. I am literally one with God. Or he could have said, he could have meant that he was just kind of in closeness with God, that you know he's doing God's work. I am the Father of one, meaning kind of we're on the same page. So a little bit more about this. Some Christians think that another bit of John is significant. Now, John 8.58, you can't be asked about and you're not expected to know it. But in this bit, Jesus says, before Abraham was, I am. Now, Abraham being um, one of the early founders of Judaism. And Jesus is talking to Jews when he's having this conversation. So if Jesus is being quite literal there. Before Abraham was, I am. Then he's basically confirming that he's part of the Trinity and that he, as part of God, has always existed. There's a reliability issue here, though, because both of these quotes, the before Abraham was, I am, and I am the father of one, they come from John's gospel. Now, we've got two reliability problems here. One written quite a long time after the events it describes. It's one of the last books of the New Testament to be written. So it was written a long time after um, Jesus was actually alive. And we've potentially got a translation issue as well, because Jesus would have spoken in Aramaic, but John's Gospel is written in Greek. So we could ask maybe what's been lost in translation there, or what's been changed in translation. Second quote you need to learn, this is from 1 Corinthians 8. Now, this was written down by St. Paul, and this makes it earlier than John's Gospel. So closer to Jesus's time. So this is Paul saying, yet for us, there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist. And one Lord Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Now, that's longer. That's a little bit trickier to learn, but I would give it a good go. I would try and make sure that you've got a good handle on that quote. And again, we don't quite know what it means, but some things to notice. 
some of the wording in it, it's got a similar kind of style and some of the words are the same as the Shema. Now the Shema is a central prayer of Judaism, which makes it very clear that Judaism is a monotheistic religion. So it's kind of a Christian almost riff on that, if you like. It's talking about there is one God, there is one Lord. So it's talking about God, but making it clear that Jesus is part of that concept of God. Now, that was not a Jewish thing. That was a Christian thing. So this quote could be like a little bit of a move from a Jewish understanding of God to a Christian understanding of God. Paul, who, remember, is talking to the early Christians, he might have been reminding them that they should only be worshipping one God. And the reason they might have needed that reminder was because some of them would have come from different backgrounds where lots of gods were worshipped, where idols and symbols were worshipped. And he's trying to get them all on the same page with this idea of one God and Jesus is part of that. Another possibility, again, is to do with some of the wording. So if you read it in Greek, Paul uses the word kurios, the Lord, when he's talking about Jesus. But the thing is, this word kurios comes up all the time in the Bible, and it's got lots of other meanings. There's times when it means sir, there's times when it means boss, there's times when it means husband. So we don't think Paul meant husband, but we don't quite know what he did mean. So he might have been saying that Jesus is God's instrument in creation. So, in other words, God almost uses Jesus to do his work on earth and Jesus is carrying out God's instructions. And that might mean that Jesus has got God's authority, but it might not. It doesn't necessarily mean that they have the same authority. It's ambiguous. So the most important bit is that the doctrine of the Trinity really took hold in Christianity. So the most popular view you'll probably find within Christianity is that son of God means that Jesus's authority is God's authority. So they are the same. The implications of that are pretty big because if Jesus says it, then it's a command from God. And Jesus isn't just an extraordinary man. He isn't just a role model. He is speaking for God. His words are God's words. So that's got big implications for how Christians live their lives. Now, you need to know the quotes because I think that this would be an absolutely fair enough question. Examine why there are differing Christian views about Jesus, the son of God, with reference to John 10, 30 and 1 Corinthians 8, 6. I think that could come up or something like it. So to put it in other words, why do Christians disagree about Jesus's status as the son of God? And what are some different ways of understanding the two quotes? That's what I think that is asking. So here's how I would go about it if I was doing it. In my first paragraph, I would explore why there is a disagreement, why all Christians aren't on the same page. So Christians who accept the doctrine of the Trinity will take Son of God more literally because they believe that he's fully part of God through the Trinity. But there's a different point of view which says that Jesus is an extraordinary man chosen by God, doing God's work, but not literally his son. So the authority isn't the same. Jesus's authority doesn't come directly from God. In paragraph two, I'd unpack the John quote, I am the father of one. I would talk about the different possibilities and I'd link it back to the question. The fact that there are different possibilities of what this means explains why there's disagreement in Christianity. I'd talk about reliability, I'd talk about clarity, the things I've talked about a moment ago. And then the final paragraph, because I think you only need three, is I would explore the 1 Corinthians quote. Now, I don't think you would be expected to write out the whole quote. You could just pick bits. So, again, there's different possibilities here. Is Paul reminding his audience that there's just one God and that Jesus has got a big role in this? Or is he saying that Jesus is God's instrument, but he's therefore not the same as God? 
Now, whichever one of those possibilities is true, it creates a disagreement about what Jesus's authority is as son of God. So that makes it perfectly valid to talk about in that essay. All right, that's it for now. I hope that makes sense. Um, drop questions in the comments if you want to. As we get closer to the exam, please do check out the whole of the playlist that I've put together. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tell your friends and I'll see you soon.